This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, happy Friday. This week, Samsung had a problem with 50 million smartphones. The Google Tensor 2 looks a little bit weak and Twitter decided to become a blogging platform. Welcome to Friday, check out. Okay, my release highlights this week start with MediaTek, who launched its brand new Dimensity 9000 Plus chipset. It didn't change fabs like when Qualcomm went from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 to the 8 Plus Gen 1, and the only change is that the Cortex-X2 CPU Prime Core and the GPU got a 5% speed boost, so it's not major, but hey, it's a new chip. Then Xiaomi launched its first Windows on ARM machine, the Book S, which is a 12.4 inch 2-in-1 that looks a little bit like a Microsoft Surface Pro X, and it is priced at the very aggressive 699 bucks, which isn't bad. The small catch is that this machine is running Qualcomm's second generation 8CX Gen 2, not the Gen 3, which makes this a little bit of an underwhelming chip from 2020, but hey, it's kind of cheap, so it might be good enough for light tasks. Then nothing kept announcing more details about the Phone 1 so that they can make it into every week's news cycle, apparently. And yeah, we now know what the back looks like and that there are lights on it and that it will apparently not be sold in the United States. Oh wow. Also this week, PC i7.0 was announced and it is targeted for a release in 2025. That is not too soon, but it will offer about 512 gigabytes per second of bi-directional throughput via a 16-lane connection, and apparently I.O. bandwidth doubles every three years or so, which is really impressive. This means we'll get faster SSDs and servers and whatever else. Then Chinese battery giant Ketel, who is by the way the world's biggest battery maker, announced its third-gen cell-to-pack battery technology for Eevee's called Chilin or Kirin. Apparently it uses little blades and is liquid cooled all over, so the company can get much higher energy density and performance than the competition, and since this is an LFP battery, it shouldn't catch fire and should be less terrible for the environment than regular car batteries as well. Apparently if Tesla put one of these into their existing cars, they would get 28% more battery life pretty much right away, which is quite impressive. And finally, Solana also announced a $1,000 crypto phone and... Honestly, I just refuse to give it any more airtime than this. Okay, my first story of the week is going to be Samsung telling us that the good times in the smartphone industry might be over for a while, at least for them, with multiple worrying reports. To start with, Korean newspaper The Elec reported that Samsung might have about 50 million smartphones piling up. Reports from sources said that the primary problem is the mid-tier Galaxy A series taking up shelf space across Samsung's global distributors, so it's a little unclear if that means that the Galaxy S22 and the foldable ranges are fine, or if there is some build up there as well, but the top line number of 50 million phones is pretty crazy, since that would be almost 20% of Samsung's expected sales this year just sitting around unsold. Sources of DLX said that Samsung is lowering production targets as well, making only 10 million new phones in May, down from the heights of 20 million per month in January and February. And another report from the 9th of June backs up the bad news, also talking about production costs. This report said that Samsung was found to have adjusted the number of working days for Vietnamese smartphone production workers from 5 days a week to 3 days a week. Samsung's Vietnam factory is the largest production base that accounts for more than 6 60% of Samsung's global smartphone production. Cutting supply might make sense given the circumstances, but that is a big change to lots of suppliers too, who will face falling demand as well. The figure given was anywhere between a drop of 30% to 70% between April's orders and those in May. This is all in stark contrast to Samsung at the start of the year actually raising its goals to 334 million smartphones to be sold in 2022 and actually having much better performance than their competitors in the last few months. But it looks like the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the general economic slowdown has caught up with the company as well and has really hit them hard too. I guess for consumers, this could mean aggressive promotions and price cuts, especially in the A series, but probably also spreading to other competitors after years of high prices. And it is crazy to see how phones, GPUs, basically everything is suddenly flipping from being always out of stock to completely overstocked, which might really hurt the companies. 
Okay, my second story of the week is going to be concerning reports coming out about Google's upcoming Tensor 2 processor being maybe not very good, even though I kind of hesitate to believe these reports, but here's the news. So the Google News Telegram group was contacted by the owner of one of the bricked Pixel 7 Pro prototypes that have been going around and that I have also covered on this show a few weeks ago. The phone is now bricked, of course, but it still kind of turns on and there are boot logs as it tries to boot. And from that, the Telegram group says it has been able to determine a few details about the processor. This phone apparently uses the 2 plus 2 plus 4 CPU layout and uses a Cortex A55 CPU core as one of the lightweight cores in the CPU mix. Now from that we can see that that's an ARM V8 CPU core and because chip makers can apparently not mix and match between the V8 and the new ARM V9 standard that means that new cores like the Cortex X2 that is found in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 can't be in this phone as far as we know. And so if this prototype is indeed using the Tensor 2 SoC already then the Pixel 7 Pro will be using last year's tech and should be in the range of maybe a Snapdragon 888, not an 8 Gen 1. And I can see two ways in which this news would make sense and actually wouldn't be too much of a problem at all. Maybe Google just doesn't gun for the highest end CPU performance and focuses on AI workloads like they have in the past. Or maybe this is just a prototype and they just haven't put the newest Tensor 2 into the prototype yet. We apparently know that Samsung was chosen as the fab partner for the Tensor 2 at the start of June, so there probably wasn't enough time to put the chip into the prototype yet, which is what I'm guessing, and I wouldn't freak out about this whole thing too much. Okay, and my third story of the week is going to be Twitter rolling out its new long-form writing feature called Notes. So it's basically a blog, but on Twitter directly. It's like a full CMS, creating articles with rich formatting, uploaded media, featuring photos, videos, GIFs, and of course, tweets. Like tweets, these articles will have a unique link and then can be tweeted, retweeted, sent DMs, liked, and bookmarked. And Twitter has a really long history of kind of trying to become a blogging platform anyway, so I think this move makes sense for them. Medium, the blogging platform, was started by Twitter's co-founder Evan Williams as a way to give people a nicely designed, super readable space to host content. And Twitter later also bought Revue, of course, which is a newsletter platform that is very similar to Substack, which they then merged into something called Twitter Write. Now, fun fact, I did try Revue back in 2021 and I wrote exactly one whole newsletter. But the idea here is that a lot of people publish kind of long form content on the platform anyway in the form of threads and almost all journalists basically live on Twitter. So I guess why not try to capture some of that audience? Okay, and I also have a fourth quick story this week, which is a quantum microphone that is supposed to work even better than a regular one being tested at a university lab in Stuttgart. What? Instead of using a regular diaphragm, this microphone apparently uses giant lasers that shoot quantum light somehow to record human speech by looking at how photons move in response to sound. Wild. Einstein once called this kind of quantum effect spooky action at a distance, and it actually works faster than the speed of light. Anyway, in a quiet environment, apparently the difference isn't huge since the signal to noise ratio is only improved by about 0.57 decibels, but it is a big improvement in difficult environments like flight controllers talking to pilots, for example, where there is a lot of noise, with the university claiming that 71% of test subjects could understand the quantum recorded words better than the regular ones, which sounds impressive. Quantum science is clearly one of these areas that will completely revolutionize how much of our technology works on the long term. And if you want to learn to get a career in that field or maybe just understand how the future works, my sponsor Brilliant has multiple full courses on quantum objects, quantum computing, quantum mechanics, along with tons of other great engineering and science topics. Brilliant is a great interactive online platform where courses are crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals, and they cover topics super Super well from beginner to advanced levels. With over 10 million people enrolled and learning already, Brilliant is uniquely good because their courses are well-structured and instantly interactive. Their courses help you learn by breaking down a complicated new concept into little easier to grasp chunks, and then you actually apply your new knowledge in an exercise right away. So instead of being lost in a textbook without any application, you are able to apply what you have just learned instantly. That process means that everything just goes deeper into your brain and you have 
a solid floor each time you want to move up. Signing up is free and the first 200 people who sign up using my link, brilliant.org slash TFC, will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So check them out, happy learning, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.